Hello and welcome back to another episode of One Man Stream. In today's episode, we're going to continue working with the baseball scoreboard that we created last week. And we've added some more functionality to it, and I'll show you that toward the end of the video. Uh, just to recap, uh, we use these fields right here for visitor and home to put teams in. This area right here is for the score, and that's where the score is input right here. So we can add one to the home team, and you'll notice that it comes in uh, with the data change fade function. So we're going to add a couple more uh, to Louisville. And then for Texas A&M, the visiting uh, the home team, uh, their score is handled right here. And we'll add a couple to Texas A&M. You'll see over here in the bottom, this clear score button. If we click on this, it should take our scores back to zero when it does. So let's go ahead and add some runs back in. The next section here is uh, ball strikes and outs. And each time we hit this button right here, it's going to add one ball to the count. And you'll also notice that it adds uh, one additional pitch to the pitch count. So we'll hit one more ball, click on one more ball. It adds another ball to the count. It adds another pitch to the count. Let's add a couple strikes in here. Strike one, it goes to pitch three. Strike two, it goes to pitch four. And then this button right here allows us to clear balls and strikes. This is all information we showed you last time. For outs, every time we click the out button, it's going to add one more out and the data change function it's using there is a reveal function. And then we can also reset outs right here. Uh, the next thing is the total pitch count. We can clear the pitch count by clicking this button right here. And we can also increase or decrease the pitch count right here. This next section is the uh, inning and it's a drop down and it's actually a list widget. Let's go behind the scenes and look at it just to make sure. And it is a list widget. And we added these all in manually. You could bring it in through a, uh, a data list uh, with Notepad or some other uh, software program like that by using the load list function. But if you click on the plus sign here, it's going to add a list item and it adds a free line at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and add in the 15th inning. Now when we uh, click the drop down menu, it's going to go from the first inning to the 15th inning now. Uh, this next part here is new that uh, some new functionality we just added to it. It's the top and bottom of the inning toggle. That's the top of the inning. That's the bottom of the inning. And how did we do that? with a very familiar function that we've used several times in the past, set visible on and set visible off. Set visible on is obviously going to uh, show uh, whatever it is we're trying to show. Set visible off is going to turn it off. Let's see what the index is on this one. Index four, and it's an image, so it's going to be listed down here under source. And four shows the top of the inning indicator. And then we're going to toggle at the same time visible off index three, which is the bottom of the inning indicator. And then for bottom of the inning, it's the same thing. We've just got them in reverse. We're going to toggle the bottom indicator on and toggle the top indicator off. So once again, let's show the bottom. That's the top and that's the bottom. Another piece of functionality that we added is showing runners on base. If we click on here, it's going to show a runner on first base. We'll click here, runner on second base. Click here, runner on third base. And then we have a clear bases button right here. And these are done through the exact same thing that the uh, previous buttons were using. It's the set visible on. So we set visible on for index one and it is an image source and index one says on first and i'll take you to gt title designer and in uh, gt title designer you can see over to the right all these pieces of information here and you'll see what i'm pointing to right here where it says on third on first and on second and what these are these are just some images that i downloaded off the internet i took them into my clipping magic uh, program that I used to take the background out. So all that uh, remained was the orange square. And you can see now when I click on this, where it says on second, when it's visible, it's showing 
uh, the second base is being orange. On uh, first, it's showing that being orange. I can turn that off through here. And then on third, the same thing. When I want to show that visible, uh, you can see right here the eyeball is grayed out. But when it's visible, uh, the eyeball is going to be visible as well. So back to our layout. Uh, another piece of functionality that we added is the visiting picture uh, and the home team picture. And these are text widgets, so we're able to put information in here and it, it will change it live. So we'll go ahead and show the visiting picture and that information is right here. If we change it, it will also change. Let's uh, change Greg Maddox's record to 15 and one. And you can see when I show that again, it immediately changed to 15, uh, 15 and one. And how did we do that? Well, let's look behind this button and you can see we have a couple things going on here. We have a set visible on with uh, index zero, which is text. And that's gonna be the home pictures set visible on, I'm sorry. It's gonna be the visiting pit pictures name. And then set visible off is going to be the home pictures name and then once we set that visible on uh, we want to bring that in on overlay four and we're going to leave it on for eight seconds and then we're going to take it back out after eight seconds or actually after uh, eight seconds it goes to the next function which is overlay input x out uh, and we're going to turn that entire overlay channel off and uh, that particular graphic is on overlay channel four and it does the same thing for the home uh, home team picture you can see that this outline the border of this here button is uh, it goes green and when it goes green it's showing that a script is running in the background another button we added is this button right here which is actually the button that displays and takes away the scoreboard and let's see the command for that it's overlay input X. And as we talked about before on this command, overlay input X, this acts as a toggle. And that is the reason why we're able to toggle of the scoreboard on and off. Again, we're using the uh, input is the baseball scoreboard uh, graphic that we created. And then we're doing that on overlay channel three. So we click it once, it comes in. We click it again, it goes away. These buttons here we showed in our previous video, but we'll go ahead and show these now. This button here will indicate hit. Even though it indicates hit, it still adds a pitch to the pitch count. Batter reaches on an error. We click the error button. The error button, uh, the error message is displayed and a pitch is uh, again added to the pitch count. Same thing for wild pitch. The text wild pitch is put in the upper right hand corner box. The logo is taken away. And then after eight seconds, the logo comes back in, but it does add a pitch. Pass ball. Same thing, adds a pitch. If a batter gets plunked, it adds a pitch. And then for a home run, let's go ahead and load the bases up, build a little bit of excitement. It's bottom of the ninth inning, it's a tie game, and we have a grand slam. So home run goes, uh, comes in in yellow. It does add a pitch, and I manually added four runs to the home team score. Although I hope that is not how the, how the game uh, turns out tonight. Louisville and Texas A&M are playing in uh, the College World Series Super Regional, best out of three, first game starts tonight, and uh, hopefully the Cardinals will be victorious. Uh, we'll add some more functionality to this as we go along. Once this tutorial series on the scoreboard is totally completed, I'll have it at onemanstream.com and you'll be able to download it and use it yourself. If you're enjoying this tutorial series, please give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure you do subscribe so you'll be alerted as soon as new videos are posted. And as always, thank you.